You're all very welcome uh, this morning to this dairy webinar on milk recording knowledge is power. Uh, we have three speakers for you this morning. We have Tom Murphy from Port Law in County Waterford and really like to thank Tom for joining us today. It's a busy time of the year, but for joining us today. And we've John McGuire, who is the Chalgus uh, Dairy Advisor uh, for East Waterford. And John will talk about you know, the reports that are available and how to use those reports through milk recording. And from me, then we have Stephen Connolly from Progressive Genetics, who will talk about, you know, how we get set up in milk recording. So just, uh, and we want to make this as interactive as, as we can for the next, hopefully the next, we hold your attention for the next 40 minutes or so. And we want to make it as interactive as possible. So any questions you have, there's a Q&A section at the end of your screen, just put in any questions you have and we'll put it to our speakers. But just to kick off the, the, the morning session, we're just going to look at a quick video and insight into the Murphy farm in Port Law. Very fine looking cow on the herd. Uh, good milker, good everything, but she's the highest cow in the herd for somatic cell count. She's at 2.2 million. Today we're here on the farm of Thomas Murphy in Ballycan, Portlaw, County Waterford to talk about milk recording. With milk recording, knowledge is power and today we're going to talk about the benefits that it gives Tom for improving its profitability of the herd overall. This is 2018, uh, we have 170 cows are milking, uh, EBI is 140 to 56 and 475 kgs of milk solids was done last year. I'm aiming for 520 this year and the main reasons on our milk recordings this, I'm planning to do six and plus this year, and the benefits of it is my somatic cell count. The bull tank is not accurate enough. That's number one. Number two is to cull my worst cows, and basically I'm putting pen to paper what's my best and what's my worst, and it's proven taking the guesswork out of it and to make money from make money from your cows and by breeding off the best cows in our herd. Here we have two cows back of my cows from Tom's herd, both similar looking. Just to simply look at these two cows, it's very difficult to try and see what difference is in production throughout the year. So in order to find this out, Tom looks at his milk recording reports. The reports show that the difference in value of milk sold between the two cows throughout the year is almost 600 euro. So if, for example, the higher production cow is going to be a cow that Tom will breed from for replacements, and the other one, the lower production cow, will be more than likely on the list for culling. Recording is a very important tool in the management of, dairy, of your dairy herd. As the saying goes, if you don't measure, you can't manage. If you don't milk record, how can you identify which is your most profitable cow in your herd? Or which cow am I going to breed future replacements from? With the, and when it comes to dry off, how do you know which cow am I going to use a, uh, basically a teat sealer only or I'm going to use antibiotics? The ban on uh, blanket dry off is just around the corner. So now is the time to start building that cell count story of your herd. Uh, as a milk recording organisation, a very common myth is it's very difficult to start milk recording. This is not the case. All you need to do is basically contact the milk recording office and ask for a form or download the form, fill it in and send it back into us and we will take it from there. We will take all that hassle out of getting you started and getting you on your milk recording journey. The other common myth is that if I don't have milk recording equipment or jars in my parlour, I can't milk record. This is also not the case. We can milk record in 99.9% .9 of parlours. So we can, we can basically get you on your milk recording journey and, uh, for 2021. Okay, Tom, I, I'll just bring yourself and John in there for a minute. It was great, great scenery there in, in, in Port Law. The last day we were out there, Tom, the place was looking well. What's the weather like since? You haven't had cows out ratten since, Tom? Uh, they were out four days last week, but they're in since. Weather's not allowing, and sure, the ground is far too wet. A lot of rain after falling in the last 10 days. Okay, so... Listen, you're, as you said on the video there, you're a new entrant and, and, uh, into dairying. Just maybe just outline that again and why you got into dairying. Uh, I came home to the farm, say, seven years ago and joined up a partnership with my father. And five years ago in 2018, we decided to switch from beef, suckling, over to dairy. There was the main reason there was two of us at home and there wasn't an income for two of us. And we switched to cows and... 
this seems to be the way forward in this country. And um, Ireland, or our farm is well suited. Our farm is well suited for um, dairy and it was well laid out. Every roadways, everything was there. So took the plunge and haven't looked back since. Yeah. Your father was telling me the last day you had a love for machinery. You've lost that love, he says. Yeah, a busy fool. <laughs> you, <laughs> you get sick of that. <laughs> you got sick of it. Okay, so the cows were a more profitable, better job for you. Listen, just, just one thing before I go, and you mentioned it to me the last day is that you have, you're using a herd app and you find that extremely useful. Just maybe comment on that. Yeah, basically, a cow, and done with a cow in the parlor, say, mastitis tube, injected, anything. Uh, I have my herd app, I'll have it in literally 30 seconds a minute on the click of a button. My father's beside me, we go looking through the book. It works too, but oh, I'll go back later, It'll take him 10 minutes to find it. It's you know you you won't go back to it later. You have it when you want it. You have it straight away. That's the benefits of it. Okay, and and you're new. You only start. You started in 2018, but you started milk recording last year, uh, Tom. But you got you did a few milk recordings last year. Yeah, I planned on doing five last year, and basically started last year because the first two years. Our hair, which was 115 heifers the first year, I didn't see any point in it. Whereas the cows were starting to mature, last year was the time to go at it, get my history built up for selective dry off time down in 2022. I have to have my records built up, and it's the right way to be going because you can't be blanket drying off with antibiotics down the road. It's going to be benefits for the farmer, benefits for everyone. It's more work, but it's going to be more benefits out of it also. And uh, when do you plan to do your first milk recording this year? I have a book for the 15th of March. That's the, that's the first one. You have, one. Booked. You have a booked it, already. Okay. How many do you plan to do, uh, Tom? There's 118 calf at the minute. Um, so by that time, there probably be, could be 130, 140, maybe three quarters of the herd. Like, I plan to have 80, 85% calf in six weeks. And that's what I'd be planning to have milk corn, get early milk corn in on it. Okay. Thanks, Tom. Now, Tom is available for the morning and he will answer any questions on how he does it, any, any questions about the labour and the techniques he uses during milk recording. Uh, so now John Maguire is going to go through the, the milk reports, uh, the milk recording reports and how useful they are and how we can use those. OK, John? Yeah. So hello, Richie. Um, hello to everyone. Just uh, My name is John Maguire and I'm the local advisor in the East Warford area. So I suppose what I just want to touch on here today is going through some of the reports that Milk Recording gives you. So I'm just going to share my screen now and get up a thing. So I suppose looking at the same reason why you start Milk Recording for the same reason why you look at your reports. You will need to get the most of your reports to, to get the value out of it. So to, to break it down, I suppose, into three simple reasons as to why you look at your reports or why you even start Milk Recording. Number one is to identify your best performing cows. Number two is to look at your worst performing cows. And number three is to see what is the cell count story in the herd? What's the situation there? So the reason I suppose we look at identifying the best performing cows, this is obvious enough. We want to breed from your best percentage of the cows for a number of reasons. I suppose number one, to increase, increase the speed of improvement within the herd. So say if you're keeping Frisian heifers from your, your lower production cows, you're kind of, the herd will remain stagnant there and there won't be much improvement. So I suppose the idea, and definitely what Tom, the idea why Tom started milk recording as well is to increase that improvement and to breed from the top 20, 30% of the cows so that you can be increasing that improvement and, and making more ground in a shorter space of time, basically. Second reason then is obviously make more money from milk sales. That's the end goal and, and, and that's the one that really motivates most people to make more money from milk sales. And then the final reason, I suppose, is to produce higher value replacements. Uh, for the likes of maybe Tom, who is maybe hitting peak numbers now and looking to solidify the herd and, and mature, there might be some surplus heifers there for selling in the future. And if there is recording there and results to back it up, these might be of higher value. So that's looking at your best performance cows. Secondly, then your worst performing cows. So why, why do you want to find out this? I suppose number one reason is identify the passengers in the herd. So obviously when people talk about their solids and production, they're kind of looking at averages within the herd. And there can be a, a potentially these, like everyone knows, are, are dragging down the averages. So it's about identifying these. And I suppose once you kind of know what your worst performing cows are, your bottom 20%, 10%, what do you do with these then? I suppose one of the things Tom 
does with these poor farming cows is that he avoids them with freezing straws. Okay, so you don't really want to put a freezing straw on your worst farming cow because it's not going to be a benefit really keeping heifers off them. So avoid them with freezing straws. And also maybe looking at using beef cross uh, straws on these cows, maybe looking at dairy beef index, something to increase the calf value. So that you, if you're not going to breed from them, you may as well get the most out of the calf value. So looking at that. And then ultimately the, end, the last option is looking at adding them to the culling list if you have the flexibility. So it depends on the herd situation, what way things are, empty rates and stuff. But if the options are there, then that's going to be obviously your, your best option to, to cull the worst cows. So you can, you can take away them passengers. I suppose then the final reason why we're looking at our reports is to see what the general herd layout is in terms of somatic cell count. So identify your individual cows that may be driving up the herd average, similar to the low production cows. Identifying cows that are possibly spreading mastitis. So it's easy enough to identify the cows with the clinical mastitis. We can pick that up fairly quickly. But what about those cows that are spreading it, that are showing subclinical signs and driving up the, the bulk tank average and spreading it through, through the milking machine or through the environment? As Tom mentioned there, there's new regulations coming down the line as regards selective dry cow therapy and the use of antibiotics. And like I say, even myself down the line, but when you think about it, the new regulations are coming in the 28th of January, 2022. And most people think of that and they think 2022, it's only 11 months away. It's, it's really, really not down the line. It, it's, it's here now. So I suppose that's just one thing to note that uh, really to build up these reports and get as much information so that we can be best equipped to deal with, with that. So I suppose just to go out um, there now and just maybe show some of the reports that, that, that we have, um, where to get them and how to read them basically. So really to get the most in reports and you're going to need to become some way familiar with ICBF. Okay, so most of the reports are up on ICBF. So as you can see here, I've logged into Tom's ICBF account. You can see here the herd number up in the left in the menu. So in order to get your reports up, simply what you do is you click on the menu beside the herd number and you go down to reports and then you go across there and down to milk management. So click on menu first, down to reports and then down to milk management. This is where you get your reports. So what pops up here then is a number of reports on the left under the milk management. And as you can see, there's four milk recording reports on the bottom. Milk management, farm summary, somatic cell count, and detailed farm report. I'm going to go straight to the bottom, which is the milk recording milk management report. And the reason I'm doing that is because this is probably the report that farmers get the most benefit of and they enjoy reading the most. As a simple, it's summarized. So in order to get it up, you just click on that. You can see here the number of recordings that Tom started last in the last year or there. So just click on, say here, the 17th of September. It'll pop up in the bottom left in the little red report here. And to open it, you just click on that. So as you can see now, the report has come up on the computer. So it gives a summary. Last year, Tom was at 143 cows. It gives what the, the results are, the date of the test in September, the end of September. And the first thing you can see here is the herd production profile. So it breaks it down into the best performers, the average performers, and the low performers. And this is really, I think, the best part of this report, that it breaks it up for you, and it even color codes it to make it simpler to read. It also breaks up into the somatic cell count. So we have the persistently infected cows, the recently infected, the recently cured, and the healthy cows. So all these are contained within this report. So it's really a one-stop shop for all, for, for all your needs. So if we click down, we see we're into straight away the best performance group. So just to break it down, we can see here cow ID 654, 670, 681. You can see the calve and date, days in milk, and then the next few columns are the test day. So on that day of milk recording, what were the results? You can see there is 24 kilos, the fat, the protein, the SEC. And then on the right of that, we can see the results for the year to date. So now I think this is a really valuable part of this. So you can track the year to date, which is the important one. So how much milk is that cow produced to date? How much solids? And then interestingly, it breaks it down into milk value. And also has an EBI tab. So you can even see there between the first two cows, there's a massive difference in milk value. The milk value sold for the first cow is 1,700 compared to 2,384 for the second cow. Now, as you can see, I suppose some of the reason there is to do with cabin date. The, the first one was in April, the second one was in February. But it's just interesting that it breaks it down. And I think farmers really find that year to date and milk value one important. So that may be one that 
you could look at or you could focus on. So I suppose just even keeping an eye on that cow there, 670, calved on the 10th of February and up until September for the milk garden had produced 550 kilograms of solids to a value of 2,384. So just to keep that in mind, we'll go down here now to our average performance group. Click down the green ones are all your best performance. And then we're into the orange, which is your average performance. So as you can see here, you watched the video earlier on where we looked at two different cows and even we may as well stick with one of them, which is 4529, which is the second from the bottom here. 4529 calved on the 11th of February. So a day after the cow we, we looked at earlier. And just to look at the production to date, this cow and average performance group will only produce 367 kilograms of solids up until September with a milk value of 1,647. So that's almost 700 euro of a difference, even though the cows, two cows are both calved within one day of each other. So this is an example of getting value out of looking at your reports. So I suppose, what does Tom do with this information then, or what can you do with this information? Well, this cow here, the 45209, that is, is only producing 367 kilograms of solids up until September. This won't be a cow that, that Tom will look to breed from for a Frisian straw this year. Absolutely not. He'll, he'll avoid that and he'll probably go with a beef straw. And if he has the room or the flexibility with numbers, this cow will be on the list for calling. So that's, I suppose, a synopsis of how you can read and get the most in them reports. If we click down into the red, thankfully there's only one cow in the low performance group. And you can see here her value is quite low only 239 kilograms of solids up until that report. So your green group is your good performance, your orange group is your average performance, and then the red is the low. The last part of this report then gives you your somatic cell count. So your persistently infected cows, which cows are constantly a problem. You can see here this cow, 3080, had a somatic cell count reading of 704,000 at the that milk record. Next one was 580,000. Previously was 1.2 million recorded before that in July. So persistently a problem. So that's an interesting list to make up that those cows are constant problems that Tom needs to address. We then have the recently infected cows. So where is your mastitis or asthmatic cell count spreading within the herd? So this is interesting to see where is it being picked up? How, what's the rate of spreading? We then have the recently cured cows, which, which is good sign. So when Tom is treating them or, 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 or giving them attention that it's working. It, it's working. So that's a good thing. And hopefully the healthy cows, which is the last list, is as big as we can. That's where we want all our cows to be. So you can see here the results are at 55,000 somatic cell count for the first cow. And so that's a brief introduction of that report. Just going back to the ICBF then, that was the milk recording milk management report. So I think that's kind of the one-stop shop. It's very good. It's laid out well and, and it's easy to read. The other reports, we'll just click into them very quickly, but they're basically just contain the same information, but maybe in different details. The farm summary, again, we'll click on September, pops up in the bottom left, and we open that up. So really what this gives you is the breakdown of the lactation groups. So we have the heifers, the second lactation, third and four plus. Some, some people might just look at this and see what are the differences in the different groups. And I suppose from Tom's point of view, what he's striving for with the milk recording and with his herd's minutes is to drive herd maturity and to solidify the herd to, to get more production out. So as you can see, his heifers here are producing 1.55 kilograms of solids, whereas the third lactations were producing 1.93 kilograms of solids. So you can see there the difference as the cows get into their second and third year, they're getting more mature and, and, and they're they're settling in and producing a lot more, more milk and that's what Tom likes to see. So it's about, he's about setting up his herd now to mature it as much as possible and to drive performance. Also, I suppose one thing to look at here is the protein percentage. So the protein percentage, as you can see in the heifers, is, is at 3.9 and it's dropping as the cows are getting older. So what well, you might think is dropping as they're getting older, but it's good to see it actually increasing as the cows are getting number or getting younger, sorry. So this shows that the breeding decisions are working on the farm and the protein is increasing as, as the new heifers are coming into the system. So I suppose looking at total solids uh, and the protein percentage is the main one of this report. If you go back then, we have the farm somatic cell count report. Click up again the September one, open it on the bottom left. And this is just basically a black and white version of the, the same report we got earlier. Just list the cows with their numbers and, and their the, 
the readings. So we won't spend too long on that. And then finally, we have the detailed farm report. To be honest, most farmers mightn't look too much in detail at this. It's it's quite specific. There's a lot in it. And um, it's, it's heavy enough going. It just lists each cow one by one. It gives all her information, all her, all her results. For those that are looking to get more into the detail of it, this might be the report for you. But um, really, it's the previous report we looked at, which is the milk management report, this one with the color code. This is really the easiest one. It breaks it down, and, and it's quite good. Also, as well, there should be a milk recording annual report here. Now, it's not on Tom's herd for, I suppose, one reason is that Tom only started milk recording last year. And um, you have to have a full year of milk recordings of minimum four recordings done in order to have your annual report. And also, just to note as well, often a question comes in, the cows have to be marked as dry on ICBF in order for your annual report to be generated at the end of the year. So just a common kind of um, thing that farmers come across. So just for argument's sake, I got up a sample of an annual report uh, from a sample herd. And I suppose this is a screenshot I pulled out, which I thought was of the most benefit from the report and that farmers could get the most value from. And that is your top cows versus your bottom cows. So this is on your annual report and it gives you your top brand cows for heifers, second lactation, third plus, and it gives you your bottom cows. So I suppose straight away, this gives us a pre-populated list of our top cows and straight away looking at this, you could say, right, here is 27 cows that I would look to breed from or, or get replacement from because they're producing well, they're valued, milk is high and, and they're solids and the volume is good. And then similarly, on the right hand side, we have our bottom rent cows. Those are cows that you'd probably look at and think, look, they're not really the ones I want to be breeding from, um, which is important too. So that's a really, really good um, part of the annual report, your top cows and bottom cows. And just to note there at the bottom, it says the difference in milk value between the average at the top and the average at the bottom was almost 900 euro for this herd. This herd is a very well run herd, uh, very good production, very good figures. So I'd imagine for a lot of herds, this would even be much, much bigger. It just, just shows even with a well run herd like this, that there's a massive variation between the average at the bottom and the top cows, almost 900 euro. So I suppose finally then, just before I finish up, I want to just touch on Sometimes questions come in as well is that I can know where the reports are, I can see the reports are giving me the, the pre-populated figures. Is there any way I can go through the herd myself or come up with choosing different cows? And the answer is yes. So if you go back up to the, on your ACBF to menu, if you remember earlier, to get the reports, we clicked on report. But if you want to get the filtering option, you have to go to view profiles. When you click on view profiles, we go across to milk recording over here. So we can see we've current lifetime and somatic cell count. So just for argument say to go into the lifetime, this gives us a live version of the report, as you can see. So it gives you your herd, your animal number, breed, sire, what lactation she's in, and then milk, fat, protein, et cetera, et cetera. So I suppose the valuable, valuable part of this live report is that you can actually actively select for different values to funnel it down. So as you can see, Tom has 171 cows here. So for example, a common reason people go in here is I want to get my cows that are top protein. So how do I get a list of my cows that are top protein? So the first way is in this from and to tab, you just simply go in and click, I want all my cows over 3.5% protein, for example. So you simply just put in 3.5 and you can see straight away we're back to 73 cows out of the 170. That's a really interesting way. You can change it down if you want. You can Similarly, you can change it up. The second thing you can also do is if you go to protein and click this little arrow here twice, so one, two, straight away what this does is it lists our cows from the highest protein percentage to the lowest. So that's another very good way. You can see here the highest cow is 3130. Sure, Tom will know her there. He'll, he'll recognize her. And she's consistently given a protein value of over 4%. So it lists the best to the, to the bottom. So just to recap on that there, you click on the protein twice and it comes up best to bottom. So that's just that one. And then the last one is a common one that farmers look for as well is the, the somatic cell count. How do I select out cows based on somatic cell count? In order to do this, we go to the menu, we go to profiles again, and we click on milk recording SCC. So we just simply go into that and it gives up a similar table with your cow, 
your lactation, calving date. And over on the right hand side, you can see here September, July, May is the last three recordings in Tom's herd. So again, a lot of the time coming into the back end of the year when people are drying off herds, they want to maybe pick out all their cows that are under 100,000 cell count or under, under 50,000, whatever it might be. In order to do that, again, we go to from and to tabs just above. We just click on two and put in fragment say 100. So what this is doing is it's selecting all the cows that are consistently under 100,000 SEC. 100, 100. We can see here that out of Tom's 170 cows, we have 92 that in the last three recordings were consistently under 100,000 cell count. So that's another common one and it's a very useful tool to come up with your own figures if you want to be strict or if you want to be looser, it's up to yourself. But just to finish then, on menu and ICBF, reports, milk management to get your reports. And if you want the live ones where you can filter yourself, it's view profiles and then milk recording. So look, if anyone has any questions or that on the reports, please put them into the chat and, and we'll, we'll try and answer them. And I hope that was of some benefit um, and to you overall. Okay. Thanks for that. Listen, John, there's an awful amount of stuff in that, uh, in yeah. those reports. There's an awful amount of information. Tom, I might bring you in here as well, Tom, just for a few questions that are coming through. And just to remind people, just keep the questions. Or we have questions coming through, but uh, there's a Q&A button at the end of your screen, at the bottom of your screen, should I say, and you can put your questions in there. I suppose one question is coming through, John, is can anybody get these reports on ICBF? Like, how do I get them? Yeah, so like in order to get them, um, Rich, you obviously have to be a milk recording and you have to be signed up for your ICBF Plus. Okay, so that's the main one. So anyone who's, who's on ICBF Plus can quit and get those reports. Um, off the top of my head, I think the, the ICBF Plus is something like 50 or 60 euros per year. It's, it's very it's very low. It's not, not high at all. And when, once you have that, you have your logins and you're signed up for ICBF Plus, all those reports are there and, and it's all at everyone's fingertips. And I suppose once it's there, then, you know, there's, there's so much information, like you said, and, and to get the value of it is the thing. And, and I'm going to throw this back to you, Tom. Have you used those reports and what reports have you used? I do, yeah. I use them the whole time because heard app on the phone even, going back to the phone, you can just say you have your high somatic cell count, there's 10 or 12 of them. You know which one is which off the phone, but if you want to sit down and look at it properly, sit down on the computer, bigger screen, and give yourself time and look at it. And you know, you do your homework on it, you'll, you'll know pretty quick. Which is pretty user friendly, very user friendly. Like it's straightforward as to use. Just, well, you can't make any mistakes. Like okay, and just think, uh, uh, we're coming near the breeding season now, and uh, again, I know we're in the middle of calving, but breeding will come quick enough, and the decisions around that. How? What decisions would you, what's your plan with the information that you have, uh, Tom? The plan, the the, plan with the information I have, any cow, all my top performing cows, they'll be going straight for AI straws. And that's now up to standard. We'll be going for a beef straw. And if I come the option then when it comes to empty rate, if I, if I have a low empty rate and I can pick and choose culls, I will. And if I can't, I can't. It, give me, it gives me more options. Like I'm, I'm not tied to the one one pack like that. Frisian cast here that you don't want to have, do you know? You only want sure. to replace so. But the herd app definitely is a, is a way, is a, is a good way of, of accessing the reports. And John, just on that, who could advise us? Like, there's a question coming in, there's an awful amount of reports there. Like, how do I get advice on these reports? Yeah, so I suppose like, your, your first port to call it, if you have done your recording and you have the reports and you're not really too sure, contact your advisor, you know? They're the ones that are looking at them every day um, they'll be able to break it down simple enough or even maybe you look, look ask your technician about it but like your advisor probably your first port to call and um, they're used to it and that sort of thing and like just emphasis on what Tom said as well like I suppose over the last number of years like the, the emphasis has been on a, a black and white calf is going to be milk like you know if it's region it's there but really I suppose a lot of herds now are, are hitting their numbers and they're realising that every black and white calf isn't the same and that's where Tom is really focusing his energy on is to focus on the highest production, the highest quality, so that it costs the same to feed the, the calf cow that's producing 300 kilos of solids as those producing 580, 500, you know, so that's really where the focus is on it. You're back to your marginal cow. What has your marginal cow that's not leaving? Exactly, leaving Richie, yeah. 
Uh, there's a question here about selective dry cow. If I'm not milk recording, and you mentioned January 2022, if I'm not milk recording, what impact would that have for drying off, John? Yeah, so like January 2022 seems a long ways away. It's literally 11 months. If you're not milk recording, like it's, I, I, I think it's going to be difficult. Um, it, you're boring less shooting in the dark, really, if going around the selective dry cow route. And the selective dry cow route is using just teeth sealer, no antibiotics on, on the cows. And without the information of seeing which cows are low somatic cell count and suitable, it's very hard. Like, you know, you're really only guessing um, without that. And look, nobody wants to be guessing and, and that. So like maybe Tom can comment there. I think Tom tried a little bit of it this year based on his reports. Um, and I suppose one of the reasons why he's looking at increasing his reports next year is to have more information to make more accurate decisions on picking those cows for selective dry cow. Yeah, Tom, maybe you comment on that. You used it last year. Yeah, I done 12 cows last year, but I picked under 40,000 cell count. I was very cautious of it because I didn't have enough records built up. I was very, very cautious doing it. And cleanliness is the major one in it. It's the big one. And somatic cell count is the next one. But yeah, out, there's 10 of them calved out of 12. At the minute, they're perfect, but I won't know till the 15th of March I do a milk recording what the final results are, but no issues so far on it. Okay, uh, there's a question, sorry now, I just, there's a question coming in here. Uh, can you make accurate decisions based on one year's milk, uh, milk results or would you be better using three-year averages? I suppose, like, look, the more you have, the better, obviously enough, that, that, that goes without saying. I assume maybe that that question is coming from the selective dry cow route. I suppose the answer to that question is, like, if you're going down a selective dry cow route, you need probably a minimum four recordings a year, preferably six, because without that, there could be spikes in the somatic cell count in between the recordings that you're not picking up. So I suppose aiming for that four, at least four and preferably six recordings in the year um, is, uh, is what you're, you're aiming to do. Um, look, if someone has a three-year average, that's, that's brilliant, like, you know. But I suppose if, if someone's starting off now, get your four or five, six recordings in this year and you'll be well set up, like, based on that year. Another question, a heifer with low milk solids, can she improve over the years or will she always be low? Hey, that's a good question, actually. I know it's probably going back to my table where the heifer is the top 10 and the bottom 10. The heifer one is one one that I'd probably take with a pinch of salt. As we know, our heifers are probably only at around 75% of their mature capacity of milk and solids. So my advice on that would be don't make any rash decisions in the first year. If you can see five or six or heifers that are quite low, just keep an eye on them, put a little yellow mark beside their numbers and look at next year's recordings. And if they're still consistently low after second year, maybe then that you might be looking at them. You know, uh, I wouldn't jump on them straight away, but just keep them there and, and give them a chance. And if, if they're consistently low, then, then uh, they're probably going to be low anyway. Okay, and there's a good question coming in. If you use a beef sire on lower value cows, uh, Will this extend her gestation period and then she'll have lower milk value? I presume he means lower because there's less days in milk. It depends on the gestation period of, of the desire that you're using, Richard, really. Depends on number one, the breed, and number two, the actual gestation length. So that's something that you should look at using short gestation uh, selection if that's what you're worried about. Okay. Um, and do you have any comment on that, Tom? The bulls that you use. Yeah, if you, to, you pick and choose your cows, you could use a blue calf, say on a big, big, old, big cow. Like it all, it all varies. It varies on gestations then as well. Like it depends how start you start the eye and how early and lay cows calf and it depends on a lot of things. You know, like if you but, use, but it's something you 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 would take note of the gestation length of the bull. Yeah, like I wouldn't use limousine because the gestation is longer. I think it's ninety something days. It's too you know it's too long. So I just don't use one of them. Simple as that. Okay, we have loads of questions coming in and keep them coming. And um, But in, we'll come back to a, a questions and answers session at the end. But firstly, now we're going to have Stephen Connolly from Progressive just to give us uh, an outline of the how um, we go about milk recording. Okay, Stephen? Uh, that's brilliant. Thanks, Richard, uh, for that. Um, so... I suppose what we're what I'm going to talk about is why milk recording. I know some of it's probably already been covered um, by John, but I suppose before I start, I suppose when you're after finishing drinking your cup of tea 
and um, you're going back to down to your cows. But just think about for those who are not milk retarded, how do you actually know when you back down to look at your cows, which is your most profitable cow? Or which cow next year am I going to give an antibiotic or a TC or only? And for those of you who maybe are already milk recording, you know, are you using the information you have to make decisions on that? So, so let's just keep that in your head as we as we start. So, so I put this slide up always when I'm talking milk recording, and I suppose that if you don't measure, you can't manage. So I always try to relate this back to, for example, the plate mirror. So for those of you who are um, measuring grass in your farm, why do you do it? Do you do it because you want to grow more grass in your farm? You want to utilize it better. And ultimately you want to, by doing this, you'll make more money because you'll have more milk solids and you get better use out of your grass. And also identify the paddocks that are under performance. Maybe you need to reseed or supply, uh, spread a bit of uh, uh, lime or, or P&K. But if the plate mirror isn't what makes you the money, it's the decisions you make from using the plate mirror that'll make you the money in the farm. And milk recording, is very similar. It's the tool, but it's up to you to make the use the information to make the decisions. And I suppose I'm going to put up this next slide, and you'll probably think I'm half mad putting a picture of a tractor to explain milk recording. But if you think your tractor at home, it all has a you all have a fuel gauge, and I suppose what how would you manage that if you didn't have one or if it was broke? I know if it was me, I'd probably be walking more times than I'd be driving. And also, if it wasn't working, I'd be a bit worried or stressed. Am I going to run out of these or not? If you think of micro recording, it's probably your fuel gauge for your herd. So it'll, you know, it'll alert you. Are you going into the red? Is there a cell count issue? So like, I suppose it's just another way of looking at it. So, so a common myth, or how do we get started with micro recording? And a common myth that it's difficult. It's not the case. It's very quick and easy. Basically, you can go onto the Progress Genetics website, download the application form, you fill out the front and back, send it back into us, and we'll take from there. We will basically get you set up, and we'll get you a phone call from your milk recorder, and we'll take all the hassle out of getting you going and getting you on your milk recorder journey. So that's, I suppose, the first myth. The second myth is that, well, I don't have jars in my parlor, or I don't have milk recording equipment, so I can't milk record. Again, that is not the case. We can milk record in 99.9% .9 of parlors. We're milk recording in row trees, 60 unit row trees. We're milk recording in the straight herring bones. We're milk recording with uh, parlors have jars. And also we're milk recording in robot herds. It's something maybe a lot of people don't know. So whether you have equipment or don't, we can supply meters. So it's very important to get that message out there that we can, we can record in, in any parlor. So I'm just gonna show you a, a video. And I just want you in the, maybe in the questions and answer button, just, uh, just um, maybe leave a comment. So this cow here, cow 117, right? I have the 7th of February, fourth lactation cow. Okay, nice looking cow. And uh, the next cow which comes up here is cow 888. She's a she's calved the 7th of February, so exactly the same day. She's a seventh lactation cow. And I just want you by looking at them, can you tell me, which do you think is the best cow and why? So maybe just leave your comments and at the end we'll come back and, and go through it. But just, we'll see how good a judge you are down that part of the country. So basically what has the benefits of micro recording? I know John has gone through an awful lot there of the, of the benefits, but it's no harm go through it again. So basically micro recording can increase on farm profit. It'll identify the most profitable cows. So I know Thomas mentioned that he, he's kind of at his limit of cows now. Now he wants the best cows. So through milk recording, you can identify these. Also identify your problem cows, so these high cell count cows, that maybe if you have surplus cows, maybe these cows you can cull, and it'll also let you flag them with regards to selective dry cow. Milk recording is a great breeding tool. So I know, as John mentioned, you can identify these cows that are making the most money. They're the heifers, they're the cows you want to breed heifers from. Because they will make their, and it will lead to a future improvements of your herd. And also, maybe there's some cows that Basically, maybe are low on fat and protein or low solids. Maybe you can use a different type of AI bull on them if you do want to bring replacements from them. And then the cows that are poor performing, again, you can use a beef bull on them. What some people don't know, you can use milk recording. It's a very good management tool. So you can pregnancy test. So after 28 days, you can identify using the exact same sample uh, if a cow is in calf or not. 
And you can also do disease testing like units. So they're just extra strengths to the maple cord that you can use and can help, uh, help your business. So at uh, work by Chagas, uh, we looked at comparing herds of maple cord versus herds of bitten maple cord. And what was the impact of that farm? So herds of maple cord, their cows produced 782 litres more milk per cow, which is 13.5%. There was a 33,000 lower cell count. And each cow made 167 euros higher margin. Okay, so again, you know, it's a very independent piece of work and it shows that maple cord just works. It makes more money for the farmer. And you can't talk about milk cord at the minute without talking about selective dry cow therapy. And when I talk to farmers, a lot of people think, well, that's, that's a long way down the tracks. I don't have to worry about that for now. But it really isn't the case. You know, the 2022 is just around the corner. It's coming fast. So you need to start thinking. You need to start planning uh, for what you're going to do. So... My opinion is you need to start building that cell count story in your farm, and it's not too late. Like now is the perfect time to start. If you target to get four, up four, ideally six milk recordings in, you're going to have a good bank of data that you can basically plan better, manage your herd better. Come next, uh, come next, come 2022. And if you look at the, if you look at this here, this is just an example of a report. If you look at cow eight two five, like she's over five million cell count. In October, she was 4 million. This heifer here, 1790, and we never think of heifers, that they're an issue with, with cell count. Look, 1.3 million. And in June, she was over near 9 million. So it just shows you, know, this, it'll give you the bank of data to make good decisions on, uh, on drying off. And what information is available? And I know John touched on it, uh, which uh, gave a great insight. So again, you'll get a text of your five highest cell count cows, okay? The next day, then all your reports will be available. So, and what you will get from it is your kilos of fat, protein, cell count, your cow milk value. But also we have a new report now called the Lifetime Report, which a lot of you probably haven't seen yet, but they're, they'll be coming out, out this year, where it will give a bit more detail. But it'll rank your cows. It'll rank your cows from best to worst. And it can constantly rank them by each recording you do. And it'll also put, uh, it'll put a margin on your cows, of which you're most profitable and which you're least. So it's going to be a really good report, and I really think you're going to get a lot out of it. You also have your annual report that you must have four tests for. That's very important if you have an outbreak of TB that's for valuation. So it's very important to have the four tests to get your annual report and have that, I suppose, a security blanket there that uh, if that never happened, TB. And how do I get me information? So you can get your information firstly by email. So it'll go directly by email to you. So you can have a look at them uh, reports. You can get it by post. As, uh, as John went through there very well, that you get you, all the information is available on ICBF. And then you have it on, on the likes of your herd apps. So it's there, it's in your pocket, you're on farm, you can look through the information, you can make decisions there and then, where sometimes on paper, you know, it can be a little bit hard to sort. And just to put a slide on that, we just look at, this is what the, the, her, the herd app looks like. So this is the first screen. And if I just click this button here, it will bring up all my list of reports. And I'm, I'm, I'm interested in my milk reports. So I click my milk reports. And for example, very easy, if I click in a couple of buttons, I can sort my cows on cell count. You can sort them on, on your kilos of fat, protein, wherever you want to. But it's very easy. It's very, uh, it's, it's, it's in your pockets. So you're in the parlor. You want to check something. It's there for you. And it makes life easier for you. Next thing is then, as a farmer, what options of milk recording are available to me? So the first one is manual milk recording. What does that mean? So if you have meters in your parlor or jars, iCar approved meters, then we will send in a technician with a handheld and he will do the milk recording for you. So that's the first option if you have equipment. The second option is if you don't have any milk recording equipment in your parlor, we can supply our own meters to you to do the milk recording. So we will give you a training session to show you how to use the meters, and then you can do that milk recording yourself. The third option, which um, in milk recording, a big barrier is labor. When we hear that we can't milk record, we don't have the labor. We can provide a professional assistant to work the meters for you in the parlor, while you're doing your milking. You can concentrate on your cows, 
while we'll supply someone to use their meters. And that will basically free up a bit of time for you. It will speed up the milking. And also you'll get more accurate information because you're not trying to do two things at once. So it's very important to basically want an assistant to contact your milk recording organization, or if you need to get someone trained up on the farm to try and use these meters better. So that's your three options available. Well, the next thing is, is price. It's always the hard one. What's the cost of milk recording? So if you're manual milk recording, the cost of the first 30 cows is 87 euro, and the cost thereafter is 275. So if I'm a farmer who just say with 100 cows and I want to do four tests in the year, each test will cost me 280 euro, and for the four tests will cost me 11 euros 18 per cow for the year. Okay, maybe you think that's expensive, but if you think of your maybe your salmonella vaccine, it's six euros twenty. If you're vaccinated, if you're like so the scours, like so your rotavac uh, corona, that's nine euros twenty. So when compared to them, I suppose it's not that much difference. And why do you use these vaccines? I suppose they're a great safety net. Again, you don't want the hassle uh, of, for example, scour and, and the extra labor. So I suppose if you think of it that way, John, it is very cost effective. We move on to the cost of DIY milk recording. So this is your do-it-yourself milk recording. So the first 50 cows is 170 euros 50 and it's 285 thereafter. So again, if we look at our 100 cow herd, our test is 313 euros. And for the year doing four tests is 12 euros 52 for the year, okay? So we're just going to move on to our to our cow, and maybe I don't. Know, Richard, has there been any uh, any anyone brave enough to pick which is the best cows? Oh, there's no comments back yet, Stephen. No. Richard, we'll put you on the spot. Which do you think is the best cow for looking at? Them? I, I'm looking at questions here. I can't see the cows. <laughs> All right. So I would say we'd uh, our Thomas or anyone John might want to comment today. See the video. Which they think is the best cow? We're looking at them. I, I, always like red, I always like a red cow anyway, Stephen. <laughs> the red uh, one is easy on the eyes, all right. Yeah. <laughs> so, right, we're, all, we're going with, you lads are saying the red cow is the, is the best cow anyway. So we'll play the video. So, I suppose when we look at this then, right, what about if I told you this cow, so just to kind of recap, both cows calved exactly the same day, whereas cow 1117, right, I'm sorry, cow 888 gave the farmer an extra... 500 euros to higher milk solids. So, like, I think other by looking at them, can you really tell which is the most profitable cow? And I think the answer is, is, is no, like, so this, but unless you milk record. And if you think about it on a farm level, right, if I was, uh, if I had a, a herd of 1117 or a herd of the black cow, I would need a hundred of the red cow to produce the same amount of milk, same amount of milk solids as 80 of cow 888. So, I think if you think about of the extra feed cost, of the efficiency, of the extra output, and even the environment, it clearly shows the importance of milk recording. And also that cow 888 has a heifer in the, when it's the herd last year, and she actually given 500 kilos of solids in her first lactation. So she's the cow you want to be breeding future replacements from. And also she's a, she's a seven lactation cow, so she's lasting. So um, I think that really shows the importance of milk recording. And uh, I don't know what we'll say about Richard and John's uh, uh, Judging, judging the cows, but I just that's that's just a little video. So that's really all for me. It was thanks for giving us the opportunity to talk on it, and I hope there's plenty of questions. Okay, perfect. So I'll just bring back in all oh, Tom and John. We we'll bring back in everyone. So for questions. Uh, I know Tom said he's going to start back milk recording on the, well, on the 15th of March. He's booked already, but there's a couple of questions coming in with the COVID, Stephen. You might just handle that one. Last year, there was problems. This time last year, uh, there was problems starting milk recording with the COVID. You might just handle the procedure around COVID. Yeah, no, that's an absolute brilliant question. So, so look, last year was a very difficult year. It was, very, it was an unknown. Whereas we now have, like we have protocols in place that to, to make sure that our recorder is safe and that the farmer is safe. So, and uh, we'll also be sending out a little gentle reminder of what them protocols are for the coming year. And um, so basically the farmer will get a phone call. Uh, he'll be asked a list of questions. I'm sure Tom uh, has got a, would have been asked them questions last year and uh, make sure, Joe, to make sure that he wasn't in close contact or whatever. And also our recorders, we wear masks and also to kind of keep away, like Joe does, uh, 
they can keep at least two units away at each time. Like, because if the recorder is doing the recording, so he can he can kind of move, he can move, kind of keep the opposite end of the department. So we have protocols in place, and look, we'll have a full service uh, this year, like so. It is. But look, it will be a challenge, but we're open, we're open for business. And I just go back to there's a few questions about DIY, but I just go back to Tom because you only started milk recording last year as a new entrant. Was it difficult to get started? And, and that's a question coming in. How difficult was it to get started? And did you find it difficult, laboursome? No, I didn't. Uh, the first recording was new to us. I'm not saying I wasn't, but after the first recording, going into the second one, there was no issue. There was no slowdown in milking. In our part, there was no slowdown. We've auto ID, so I was able to get the numbers. It was there on hand. Uh, the recorder down the pit, which is no issue because... He's not a cluster behind you when you're putting on clusters. He's a few clusters. He could be five or six clusters away from you. You know, he's not up on top of you, well away from you. And you're doing your job. He's doing his job. There's no, the only point he'd be crossing is in the middle of the pit. If he was going back up to the top to do the next row or, you know, that's, there's no close contact in the pit. Uh, that's pretty much everything on it. There's, there's no hindrance in milking. It don't, it don't slow down our milking time. It's, yeah. recorder is top notch. There's no. Okay. And on that, Steve, I know, uh, Tom is, is bang on. He's going to start the 15th of March. And when should you, your last recording be done, Stephen or John? So, so if I can jump in there. What I'd be saying is you want to be doing as close to dry up as possible. But you definitely want to be at least, probably, the, the target is 28 days and 28 days. But I would say try and do it as close as possible. But because it's very important that you plan that, that you plan that with your recorder because everyone can't or just, you know, all the one day like so I'd say have your plan in place early out when you're targeting drying off uh, and try and do it as close as possible um, and also that, again also on the other end I'll be targeting that early one I know Tom has, has it booked in for the for the early March there that's very important especially anyone that has maybe try a little bit of select strike out it's important to get that early milk recording in to basically see you know how how did it go for you? So so you know you would definitely want to be targeting uh, within sixty days of uh, of calving. Just just to jump in on that one as well, there, Richie. Just a bit of advice for anyone. Uh, it's for someone starting off that's new to it. Like book in your dates and have them booked. Like don't be kind of going to a case of oh I'll ring them a week or two before I want to do the recording because time will push on. They'll be busy. It won't get done. Book in your dates. You know first one early, last one late and maybe every four or six, how many weeks in between. If you work out a plan at the start of the year, it's very easy to follow through. If you try and do it throughout the year ad hoc, it, it falls apart, like, you know, so that's one bit of advice I give as well. And I think that's good, John, because there's a question coming in about milk recorder availability and are they scarce? I suppose what John is saying, if you have have your plan and have them booked in, that kind if of If you're solves. booked in and if you're set up and have your, your plan in place, Richie, like, do you know you're greatly reducing that, but... um. Maybe Stephen will comment on that as well. Yeah, no, look, we um, that was maybe an issue previously, but we have put a price increase to our milk recorders. And uh, so we have a good capacity there on the manual side uh, for milk recorders. And also on the DIY, we've, we've put an investment there to have extra meters and uh, especially around that Kilkenny area. So, so we've, uh, we've, uh, we have the capacity to, to meet what's there. Like, so so um, that, that shouldn't be an issue. So if I don't, yeah, so I can get, if I don't have any equipment, there's a question coming in here about equipment, so I can get the DIY. Just on the complexity of using the DIY, Stephen, you might comment on that. Yeah, so um, so if you don't have equipment, we, we can drop out our meters. They're called a true test meter, and they hang up in your parlor. So, um, okay, some people, some people might find them difficult and, and that, and I suppose it's all about the training. So it's all about providing that. So we, we have a couple of very good trainers that come out, train you how to use them. And sometimes, let's be honest, you might forget or maybe haven't recorded in a year or two. We can you know, we can get a brush up to show you how to use them. Or if you're having difficulty, uh, our technician might want this, maybe you can stay for the foot roll. Don't you know, make sure everything's working right. A lot of it is to do with, the biggest problems I found is to do with using the meter is not giving it enough time to, to agitate. So it is our, that was the big, the big one I found. Like, but if there's anyone with issues, what I'd say is contact your milk recording organization and we can go out and, you know, once we look at the first row or two, we can, it's usually just some little thing that needs to weaken, that's all. Okay, so it works. Uh, question, I said, John, you were talking about uh, putting in records. Is it too late to put in a dry off date now? Uh, a dry off date. So 
the cows are more likely to be coming up as milk and now in the system because they're going into the tank and that. But I would say maybe try, yeah, if the dry off day isn't there, obviously I'd say the question is your annual report won't be coming up. So I'd say yeah. I'd say we'll try putting in the dry off dates or putting the thing or our contractor advisor and they look into it there uh, just to make sure to double check, can you? Um, it's a little late to be on the topic of putting in the dry off, but look, ask your advisor to put it, look into it, just double check. Okay, we can investigate that, John. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to throw this one at you, Tom. Uh, there's a question coming in. If I have a very high value cow, that's she's very high value, she has the money behind her, but she's consistently high in cell count. What's your advice? What, are you, what would you do with a cow like that, Tom? Well, as of, as of up to, to this point, she would have been kept, but from now on that I'm up to my numbers, she'll be, she will be going on the colour list because she's going to spread it through the herd. Like she's, she's going to spread her... You milk that cow if she's in the milking herd, keep her to last. If you can draft her out, if, if you can do that during the summer, I know it's extra work, but if you can do it or dip your cluster after milking her, there's another option. Try and stop it from you know, you try and slow down the spread if you want to keep her for that year, but preferably try and get her out the gate. Just uh, you don't want to spread. I think, I think we'd all agree with that she's she's a spreader, she just yeah. goes okay. That's that's a fair. There's a good few questions coming in on the whole area of selected dry cow in 2022. Uh, if I don't milk record in 2022 and I come when it comes to drying off at the end of that year, what's going to happen? Will I be able to get my hands on dry off tubes? Well, like, to be honest with you, if I, I wouldn't like to be coming to the end of 22 without any milk recording um, results, like, you know, um, to have that information there is going to be peace of mind and give you concrete uh confidence i suppose to make that decision so like m my recommendation would be get get milk hard now and get started as soon as possible uh, as regards to the actual regulations around it it's more than likely going to milk card based uh, on the choose but there's nothing finalized yet but that's more or less looking what it's going to be maybe Stephen will comment on that i'm not sure yeah Stephen, you might comment there as well yeah yeah so look there's there's it'll probably become clear in the next couple of weeks of exactly what's what but Look, you're going to have to look, you're going to have to have joint individual records on your cows. Um so so like and the obvious one there is Joy's milk recording that sort of so um now that but that will become clear. But I suppose without my milk recording hat on, I suppose from a from a dairy farmer point of view, we probably need to think as well. Like I was I was uh, I was on a presentation and uh, they said there was a, a frightening stat was that uh, by twenty fifty more people will die due to micro antimicrobial resistance than cancer. And we've all been touched in some way or another by cancer. So I suppose from my non microcarn hat on, you know, we're going to have to reduce antibiotics and, and that's going to have to be an advantage to our product. You know? So like, I suppose we're going to have to look at it, like whether that's microcarn or not. Like, well, I think it's something as farmers, we probably need to keep in the back of our head. Like, so and just on that as well, there's a question, how many times should you milk record before you have accurate results for selected dry cow? I know Tom said, that last year he only started and he got three milk recordings done. We know that's not enough. So how many milk recordings do you need in a year for selected dry cow? I just, Richie, I, last year I went off. I only had three recordings. I don't have a good practice. I don't want to be coming in, say, next end of this year, I'll go a bit more, but come in the, the following year and it go wrong on me. I'm just doing it for good practices. The last year was a few cows, but good practice was, I just don't want it to go wrong because I'm cautious of it. Like. Okay. I suppose just the point I make on that just is that if you never milk recorded before, I suppose maybe to try and get six in might be a bit difficult, but I suppose even if you get four in this year, like you're going to be a lot further on than you were last year. Like, and for anyone who was milk recording, maybe try and get that fifth or sixth milk recording in. Like, so it's, the more information you have, John, the more accurate that'll, that'll be. That'll you be probably right. will need the five to get that last one before dry off, to get as close to dry off as possible. You probably will need five. You need the five, a minimum of five, to be honest with you. Okay. Uh, the cow back to uh, John, um, cow wart report, the value of that. If we have a, you went through a lot, an awful amount of reports there, but there is a cow yeah. wart index or report there. Just maybe comment on that. Yeah, that's the, the COW, the cow's yeah. own wart uh, index. Um, that's a good question, actually. I didn't go into it. Look, there's only so much you can cover, but like the cow's own wart there is a thing between ICBF and Chagas. It takes into account... I think calvin date, fertility, milk recording results, um, 
and the SCC, the health side of things. And if you're genotyping, it also takes that in as well. But what the cow zone work does is it ranks your cows from 1 to 20 or 200, whatever, how many cows you have, based on a combination of all those. So what's her value to you? So like if she's high SCC, she's going to come down the list. If she's late calving, she's going to come down the list. If her milk carbon results, she's going to come down the list. So really the cows that are ticking all those boxes are going to be first on that cow zone work. I suppose the cow zone work, like it's for people who are have a lot of information. They've been at the milk carbon with a while. They're keeping good records. You need to keep uh, as much records as possible to get the full value of the cow zone work. But if you have all the records, it can be a fantastic tool for ranking what is the cow's value to you. You know, from an all-round perspective, health, production, fertility, everything. EBI. A EBI, everything, yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's okay. an all-round. The milk value is just looking at the milk value. When you looked at the filtering, it's just looking at the milk value. It wasn't taking all, everything. Into yeah, it. it's taking into account things like, did she hold for her first uh, AI straw, her first conception rate, everything taken into account. Is it, John, that uh, you have to make a card to, to basically get access to the cows on war? Yeah, easy? you have to have a good good bank of records there to, to get that, uh, to even get get it up is right. Okay, and we're near we're nearly up. But what's the what's the general turnaround time for milk recording results? Great question, actually. So we put a lot of work into that. So we have so we're down around uh, the five days now. So what we've done actually down that part, we'll say that south part area, which has samples been collected six days a week. So we put a lot of big push on that uh, to try and get this results back quicker. And I suppose I suppose if you're waiting on post going to be slow whereas if you have the likes of use of icbf or you have your your apps it'll be a, it'll be a lot quicker like so, so once you see that text of the five high cell count cows the next day your results will be will be available to you yeah and just question come through on robot i think you might have mentioned this in your presentation Stephen. robots they have their own system of recording yields can i yeah. milk record yeah. using that system yeah, you can. So um, basically how that works is um, whether it be a Lely, a Fullwood, a Delaval, uh, we just have this thing called it's an Ori collector. And what it does, we connect that. It's very simple. We've, uh, we've married her to work. She's a genius on them. She connects it up to the, to the robot. And what it'll do is it'll take the sample, the individual samples off each cow. And, um, and we'll take the yields then uh, from, the, from the previous couple of days from the, from the robot. So uh, we've seen a big increase actually last year on robot herd signing up like so um it, it is very simple and, and we're doing a lot of work even trying to improve that uh, system more to get it more accurate okay so there's a question coming in about cost but i think you co you covered the cost of 100 cows so that's that's fine and i suppose there's nobody from the co-op but sure i'll throw it at the panel about any mention of uh glambia subsidizing the cost of milk recording um, look, I suppose they're probably talking about the other ones as well. Like you can see, Dairy Gold had their scheme there probably in, in recently, and up to I think to the last week or week four, Kerry uh, introduced their their incentivized to get it going. So look, the answer is I don't think any of us have an answer to that question. But if the industry is 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 looking that way, possibly I don't know. It's not really something I can answer in it. Okay, I think we'll have to leave that to to, to Glam B. and might come back with an answer for that. On it. Okay. Listen, at that, we, we've, we're at 12 o'clock. I said we wouldn't go past the hour. I'd really like to thank uh, everybody for attending. First of all, uh, we have nearly 100 people on here this morning. Really thank you for attending. I hope you got a lot of information from it. I'd like to thank the panel, especially to Tom, for giving over the time. We've had a few practice runs on this. Uh, and thanks to Tom for, for giving us the information he's heard and wishing the best of luck with the rest of the calving, the breeding season and recording this year. Thanks to Stephen and John for all their information. And there's, there's a guy in the background next door to me here. I better thank him, Mark Trimble. He's keeping all the technical stuff on, on, right for us. So thanks to Mark for keeping all that correct. Just to let everybody know, this webinar has been taped, uh, has been, so it's recorded, should I say. So it will be live and we'll send out a live link. It will be on YouTube and we'll send out a live link at this for anybody that has missed today. I want to catch up. So again, thanks to everyone and, and uh, best of luck in the calving season. Thank you.